morning. Good morning. morning. Welcome to Christ Church Marstown. Happy to see all of you here this morning in, in, in person worship with us. Greetings to those who are joining us for uh, this time of worship on Facebook. Happy to have you with us and we uh, uh, wish, you, wish you well. It's always a great day to be in the house of the Lord for me. Uh, it's one of the few times where I can kind of come and feel some peace, some comfort, and some, uh, some time to, to relax and, and step away from some of the things that go on day to day in, 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 in my week. So um, I'm happy to be here and, and uh, I hope that uh, you find uh, uh, peace and grace while you're here as well. This is the time of the year that we celebrate Advent. Um, for me, it's, it's a time when we welcome the coming of Jesus um, and prepare, our, prepare the way for Jesus to, to, to join us. Um, it's not all about putting thousands of Christmas lights up and wreaths on your uh, house. Preparing the way for the Lord is not about um, buying presents for everyone and doing the hustle bustle of shopping and, and things. Uh, it's really a time to prepare our hearts uh, and, and prepare the way for, for Jesus. Some of the things that I think we can do to prepare ourselves are um, genuine forgiveness. Love one another. I attend church. Enjoy life and living. Find peace within yourself. And genuinely <clears throat> reach out to others and find a way to keep them connected with you and to uh, the world around you. Uh, if you do those kinds of things, you'll open your heart and Jesus will, uh, will enter uh, and you will be able to uh, provide comfort and help to those who you come in contact with each day. This morning I have a couple of announcements. Um, we typically have our Sunday uh, Zoom after the worship. That will continue. So this, uh, those of you who are on Facebook, if you'd like to stay, stay online and join the fellowship, you're welcome to do that. On Tuesday of this week at 12 noon, excuse me, 12 noon, um, the United Fellowship will have their final meeting for the year. They'll, they'll have lunch at Chadwick's, so we invite those of you who are able to attend uh, to join, uh, join the United Fellowship. If you need a ride, uh, call the church office and we'll certainly make arrangements to, uh, to help you with that. Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. is Bible study. Uh, Mark, Mark Blooming will lead, lead Bible study on Zoom. All those interested, <clears throat> please, please uh, take advantage of that. We are in the th throngs of our blanket ministry uh, to, to give you an update. Um, so far, this, thus far, we have $536 contributed to the, uh, the blanket ministry, which in turn has resulted in 44 blankets that we'll be uh, providing for the local community through the Norristown Police Department and some of the other social service agencies uh, in the area. It may not seem like winter is here yet, but uh, it's coming. So uh, the, the blankets will be uh, uh, well, well, uh, well used. In the narthex, we have the half minutes uh, mitten tree. So please, if you haven't done so thus far, um, take advantage of taking our card and, and uh, um, providing providing the half or minute uh, mitt. On the north, in the north axle on the table, we have the Christmas cards that we typically send every year to the Japanese churches. We ask that you would take a moment to sign those cards. We'll get them out in the mail 
uh, later in the week. I'm happy to tell you that uh, we have received several profiles um, from the conference for, for a, new, a new minister. Um, we are scheduled to interview one on December 15th. Uh, so that is some, some good news. I would ask that you uh, keep us in your prayers as we, uh, we join in and, and meet with the candidate uh, here, here at Christ Church. Uh, so that's that's very good news. Um, it's not a guarantee, so I, I'm not trying to, uh, to tell you that, but uh, um, it is it is progress. So um, when we when we called Pastor Jeff, uh, it took us about 14 months uh, before we were able to, to bring him on on, on board. Uh, so we're not quite at 14 months, so that's, that's, uh, that's, that's progress. I would ask if there's any announcements from the congregation, if they would have anything to share with us. Okay, thank you. Could you please rise for the call to worship, please? Friends, come to this time and space exactly as you are. We come with questions, questions, dreams, hopes, hopes and visions of peace. Come to this time and space exactly as you are, for the Spirit meets us here. For the Spirit is always moving in our midst. We gather on this day, our God has made us seeking to receive afresh the wisdom, the wonder, the peace, the presence of the Spirit. We gather on this day, our God has made us be transformed by the Spirit who is always with us. The Spirit who was with us yesterday, who was with us today, who promises to be with us tomorrow and every day to come. In this morning, the invitation. Oh, holy God, be with us in this place as we worship together in love, care, and patience. <laughs> as we await the coming of the Prince of Peace, the one who can let us seek peace in life as eagerly as we seek understanding and fulfillment. We ask in Jesus' name. Today uh, we are the, uh, pretend we're an organ with strings. <laughs> This morning we light the second of the Advent candles, the candle of peace. 
Peace is that state when stress has been eased and we can hear the music of nature around us. In the calm of peace, we can open to truly listening to the contributions of others and to find our own voice. We remember that Jesus went off to be alone to find peace to be refreshed and renewed for the work ahead. May we look for moments of peace in this hectic but joyful season. At the same time, we pray that our sisters and brothers in our communities and throughout the world may also choose to live in peace for the sake of their children and the well-being of this planet where we all live. This morning, the first scripture reading is from Baruch, chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. Take off the garment of your sorrow and affliction, O Jerusalem, and put on forever the beauty of the glory of God. Put on the robe of the righteousness that comes from God. Put on your head the diadem of the glory of the everlasting. For God will show your splendor everywhere under heaven. For God will give you every more the name Righteous Peace, Godly Glory. Arise, O Jerusalem, stand upon the height, look towards the east, and see your children gathered from west and east at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that God has remembered them. For they went out from you on foot, led away by their enemies, but God will bring them back to you, carrying glory on a royal throne. For God has ordered that every high mountain and, ever, and the everlasting hill be made low, and the valleys filled up to make level ground, so that Israel may walk safely in the glory of God. The words and every fragment tree have shaded Israel at God's command. For God will lead Israel with joy in the light of his glory, with the mercy and righteousness that come from him. And our second reading this morning is found in Luke 1, verses 68 through 79. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from the old, that will be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him in all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophets of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us, to give light to those who sit in the darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. 
sends the readings for this morning. May God add his blessings upon you. So through brutality, 
and bullying and some more negative emotions that were thrown around, the troops on both sides were hauled into line so that the killing could continue. And it did. The story does not have a happy ending. There were four more years of war with a treaty that opened Germany to the rise of Nazism, the Holocaust, and the whole world to a war that was far worse than that war that was supposed to end all wars. It turns out human beings have an actual affinity for being with other people. We like other people. And it takes something pretty significant to get people to want to harm someone else. Those emotions, those negative ones, it's really hard to get that level of hatred going. But you know what? The small angers, the small hatreds, they're the ones that work for us because we can, they come to us pretty easily. We don't have a lot of trouble being angry with our neighbor for doing something. Oh, I don't know, throwing trash around, not, not being exactly the way we would want them to be. It's easy, it's pretty easy. We argue with our families, we argue with our friends, and sometimes those arguments can turn into things that are far worse than arguments. We all know that's what happens. And because we know that, and because we know we all participate, and we do to some extent, we need people who can guide us in the ways of peace. And you know those people are around. They're the, they're the people who can show us some clarity when we're trying to figure things out. They're the people that are often ignored because they're not loud. They don't yell at other people. They don't scream their causes. But they just kind of pass it around there. They're the ones that can walk the streets nonviolently in protest in the face of outrageous anger and hatred. They're the ones that can help to be with us when we're struggling. They're maligned, they're called cowards or wusses, whatever that means, and all kinds of other negative things. And those negative things are thrown at them on a regular basis. Troops coming back from war, if they don't claim the experience was thrilling or somehow fulfilling or a uh, growth experience or even just necessary are maligned, called unpatriotic, un-American, un-German, un-whatever other nationality you would like to say. And they hold that negative feeling toward them throughout their lives, as we saw with John Kerry, who, although it was 30 years after his anti-Vietnam War stance on his return from fighting there, uh, 30 years later, it was used against him while he was running for president in 2004. Why is it we do that? Well, we do that because we really want to believe we're part of something big. And instead of that something big being peace, caring for one another, acknowledging that we are followers of the Prince of Peace, we look to something else. You know, we remember that Jesus came and was called the Prince of Peace. And you'll notice from our scriptures and all the other things that you know about Jesus, he did not champion the overthrow of Rome. He did not stand for the destruction of the Jewish people or the Jewish culture. He did not even talk about warlock, warlike things except as a metaphor. And yet, we seem to find our way out of peace as much as we can. So my prayer for all of us is that in this Advent season and beyond, that we can start looking to more peace in our lives. Peace within ourselves, peace within our communications with one another, families, friends, and that we can start teaching peace by our example to our children and grandchildren in particular, but, but to co-workers, to friends, to even strangers that we meet. Because kindness is one of the first steps toward peace, and we all can do that. 
We all can do that. And we have lots of guiding lights out there who can help us. Those people that can guide our feet in the way of peace as we are waiting and come to follow the Prince of Peace. Amen. Special music today is a, an ancient Latin hymn, and it's uh, of the Father's love begotten. Of the Father's love begotten, and the world's begun to be. He is Alpha and Omega. He's the source, the ending key of the things that are and have been, and the future years shall see. Norristown treasure. Um, people, a lot of people called him Gentle Ben. He, he just was just a genuinely wonderful person. So he'll be missed. Are there any others? I hear um, uh, Ray is improving in his uh, recovery, which is a wonderful thing to hear. Yeah, Ruth, I spoke with him this week and he is home, doing Good. well, <coughs> making his own coffee. Wow, hey, that's a big step. He's walking around with a walker, but he's feeling great. Oh, good. Great. That's wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Great for doing, doing well. Yep. Awesome. Are there any others? Then let's come to God in prayer. Oh, God, giver of peace, help us to find ways to let peace be more a part of our lives. Help us to not always feel that we need to be right or we need to be in competition with others, unless it's for fun, for sport, for gain. Help us, O oh God, to hear your word, to live the peace and share it with others. Be with all of those who are suffering. Let them know the peace that can come when suffering can end. Help them to be able to live a quality of life that they would choose for themselves. We also ask your healing for those who are mourning in this season of the year, the, one of the most difficult times for us, as you know. We have a real loss and feeling of loss through this time. So be with us, help us to find the holidays somewhat at least joyful, but help us to include the memories of those people who've lost back into our lives so that we can see them in joy and an appreciation that they were part of our lives. We ask all of these things and so much more that you know in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us all to pray together, saying, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will come, be done. Will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the light of the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, we have a chance to give back some of what we have been given that others may prosper. Oh, and by the way, our, our, um, our benevolence of the month is the uh, Christmas offering and the other offerings that go with that. And what those are is um, to help pastors who are not able to make it financially, even though they have lived a, a life of ministry. to this table that is the remembrance of the last meal that Jesus ate with his disciples and friends before his death. And now we, as disciples and friends, come and prepare for the celebration. Uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, as we prepare to uh, to eat at, G at Christ's table. <clears throat> we confess to, before God and one another that we have not, we have failed to, uh, sorry, we have failed, uh, um, fallen short of our intentions to love. Oh God, God of peace. peace. We, we confess, confess that, that we have, have not always seen, seen peace as, as a gift. gift. We have started and continued useless arguments. We have said unkind things to and about people we know, as well as strangers. We have forgotten how painful unkindness is directed at another person can be. And so we have been unkind. We put our support behind people and actions that do not promote peace. Forgive us, O oh God. Touch our hearts that we may see the value of peace and make working for it an important part of our lives. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. People of God, Jesus did not come here because we are perfect, but because we make mistakes and sometimes act in ways that we would not choose to do. And so God forgives us because God loves us. So let us accept that forgiveness and let it help us to live more peacefully in our lives. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the
and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our God most high. It is right to give our thanks and praise. O oh God, O oh God, Spirit most high. Could you all uh, read this read that with me? Oh God, God, Spirit Most, most High, to you, you we give, give our thanks that, that you show us the ways of peace and justice and, and bring into us hope, peace, joy, joy and love as we await the coming of Christ, who in time would share with us his precious meal. And so we join with all of creation to praise the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy. holy. God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. <laughs> On the night of betrayal, Jesus took bread. Jesus took the bread and then he broke it, blessed it, gave it to his friends, the disciples, and said, take it and eat it, all of you, for this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then, in the same way after the supper, Jesus took the cup. Jesus took the cup. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is the cup of my blood, which is shed for you and for all. Do this in remembrance of me. <coughs> Bless now this bread and this cup. Help them to be for us. Jesus represented here and in our lives. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who brought us to this table. Now, please join me with the uh, communion prayer. God of, God God of grace, grace, you renew us at your table with the bread of life. May this food strengthen us in love and help us to serve you and each other in love and peace. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. This is the feast of God for the people of God. Therefore, let us keep the feast.
Take and eat, for this is the body of Christ which is broken for you. this and drink this. This is the cup of the new covenant which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of Christ. And now join me in our prayer of thanksgiving. We thank, thank you, O God, for gathering us, us at your table of love and peace. Here we lay aside our pain and sorrows. Here we take up your gifts of love and the will to choose peace, strengthened and renewed, prepared for the challenges of the days to come. Amen. And now our hymn is Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
thank everyone for, who helped with the service today. Uh, Jim as worship leader, Christine for helping me to put the service together, uh, our ushers, um, Jeff, Jim, every, Linda, everybody who helped to do the service. Thank you so very much. And uh, well, you know what comes next. We know what is required, required of us to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. So let's walk humbly from this place, knowing that we are loved by God, our Creator, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Comforter. Amen. Amen.